So there I was, hair down to here, gigantic Elvis sideburns, big jowls, all 225 pounds of me with my black jeans and my wannabe motorcycle boots walking into the Navy recruiter in Delray Beach. And uh, you, you can imagine as, as this character, this, this, this freak show walks into the recruiter's office and the guy takes one look up and says, may I help you? <laughs> so I said, you bet. I said, I want to be a Navy SEAL. And he goes, well, I bet you do, son. Come on over here and, and sit down in this chair. And he, and he puts in that, that video cassette and I sit there and I'm all fired up and I'm watching guys <laughs> jump out of airplanes and, and drive on fast boats and, and blow stuff <laughs> up and shoot guns. And I'm like, absolutely, that's it. So he says, all right, why don't you come over here and sign on this dotted line and uh, we'll get you processed into MEPS. And I said, whoa, 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 let me take, let me see what you're offering first. And, and luckily uh, he took a step back and, and, and laid out what the whole program called Die Fair program, which would ultimately enable me to, to go into the, the SEAL program considering I, I passed the ASVAB and, and the selection test and boot camp that uh, I could go in and ultimately become a, a combat paramedic within the teams. I, as I took this contract home and immediately showed it to my father, the lawyer, and he read it over and, and being that now he was on board with this dream of mine in order to regain my self-confidence and learn how to commit to the team life and the SEAL teams, he was all for me and uh, gave me that push forward and next thing you know I, I was up in Great Lakes, uh, Illinois with my head shaved and, and wearing my, my Navy warm-up suit with my big white N on it standing next to, next to 500 people with their head shaved, uh, all thinking the same thing like, what are we doing here? Um, but that really was a, a special moment for me because it was a, 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 real, a real awakening as to what the power of a large group with a common goal and what you're capable of doing for each other. So basically I went into boot camp and got in a, a state flag division and before long I'd, I'd become the, the head of my boot camp class and, and in this particular division and had these two guys that were just unbelievable and, and could never have maintained the level of motivation I had without John Zinn and, and a guy we'll call him Mr. B because uh, he's still in the teams now. Um, but these two young men were 18 years old and, and they were just, I mean, they were filled with spit and vinegar and, and they gave me the inspiration every day to push harder. And all we would do is talk about what it's going to be like when we get the buds and when we get the opportunity to realize our dreams. And, and, and we just fed off each other. And it was a, a, another, another aspect of that self-confidence when all of us growing based on how we were relating to each other. It was a pretty amazing experience driving across country with Mr. B and, and coming over that Coronado Bay Bridge. And I'm sure if you ask any frogmen, uh, they can remember that first memory as they were going to check into basic underwater demolition seal training at the Philip H. Bucklew Center. It, and, it, and it's just an amazing feeling because here you are, you've traveled the, these, these incredible miles these, of your life and you're, you're actually doing for the first time, you're really taking hold of, of the thing that, that, that's inside you, that purpose, that dream. And, and once you check in, man, it's, it's pretty wild. So we came across that quarter deck on a, on a Sunday evening. And I remember came through those doors and there was the, the quarter deck watch. It was some guy that was uh, waiting to class up at Bud's and, and he had this scared look on his face. And we walk in with our chests all out, all, you know, our E3, you know, on our shoulders. And we're like, we're here for Bud's. <laughs> and he's like, all right, well, I got to get the duty chief. Hang on. He's like, chief. Two guys checking in and this crusty old seal walks out and just immediately starts hammering us. I mean, drops us down, starts beating us right there in the quarter deck of buds and, and just goes on and on telling us, you guys are going to quit. This isn't for you. There's no way you're going to make it. I mean, it was just pulverizing and, and, and come think of it, we hadn't even signed in the log book or, or checked in yet before we got our first official buds hammer session. It was a real difficult time for me because as I, as I moved into training, I really felt that I was going to have an advantage because of my athletic background and, and what I had been able to accomplish in the past. But 
you know what, all that didn't mean anything once I put my boots on the ground in, in Coronado. I mean, with the soft sand conditioning runs and the endless swimming and, and it just, it, the PT and the, the mental stress, it was, it was overwhelming and, and to the point where you're, you're in such a level of fatigue and you're just trying to, to stay above water with your, with your lips just, just right there trying to hang on. And, and, and before I knew it, I, my, my legs took a, took a beating and, and really I had some ITB problems where they became so inflamed that I couldn't even bend my legs anymore to continue with training. Fortunately, at the time, they, they had said, well, we, we're gonna, if, if a recruit shows some promise and they're motivated and they're fired up, then we'll, we'll medical roll them into that next class. So uh, as I started with class 205, I was un unbelievably fortunate enough to get med rolled into 206, which was, uh, as you can imagine, quite a relief. So as I began to rehabilitate my legs, I was like, you know what, this is never gonna happen again, period. I'm gonna crush myself, I'm gonna run extra after work, I'm gonna strengthen my legs because there's no way my legs are gonna ever affect me in buds again. Well, <laughs> come to it, I, I end up classing up with class 206 and you know, day one, phase one, going through it and some, you know, that Thursday night of the first week, I basically came to the position, I was like, man, something's not right. As I woke up on that Friday morning, I woke up and just had this unbelievable pain in my, my legs and in my feet. And I was just like, oh man, what's going on? And I couldn't believe it, what was happening to me. I mean, it was devastating. So on that run to Chow, because you run, you know, it's a mile to Chow, a mile back every single day, you're running six miles just to eat. You know, on that run to Chow, I remember crossing the Silver Strand and just being in, in total agony. And when we finally got over to Chow Line, I went up to my class officer in charge and, and said, hey man, I've got to go to medical. And he said, all right, when we get back, check in. And so I immediately went to Bud's Medical, went in and said, hey, you know, I've got this horrific pain in my legs. I need to get, go get some x-rays. And so then the DMO, the dive medical officer, sent me back across the street and I went and got x-rays. And I remember that, that walk over there was the longest walk of my life, it seemed like, because all I could think about was, my God, uh, it's coming to an end again. And, and I was just, I, I, you know, my, my spirits were low and I couldn't believe it. And uh, sure enough, when I went and got those x-rays and I brought them back to the DMO and showed it to him, he looked up at those charts and I had spider cracks in, in both tibias and fibias and I had stress fractures. So that was it. He, he basically said, listen, son, we're going to have to med roll you.